All right, I think I got everybody. Let's go ahead and get started. Um, first off, thank you to everybody for the flurry of activity relative to or related to all the uh, AIs we had. Um, you can see from all the ones that are crossed off, we actually went through quite a few. There's still some that are left open, but the list is shrinking fast. So thank you guys for working on that. I appreciate it. Um, first up is a new. Uh, Doug, uh, oh, yes. So about the action items, I have one that's you know, produce a common presentation. Can we take it off of this list if I open a issue in GitHub? Sure, yeah, just some, some way to track it. It's all that's needed, yes. Okay, great, thanks. Yep, yep. Yeah, I guess I should ask, are there any questions about the AIs um, or any comments people wanna make? Uh, I forgot that I had the first one, but the second one is open. Uh, this one? Oh, is, is this a, did I miss that? Uh, you commented on the PR. Oh, did I? <laughs> okay then, doi. Let me move it up here and cross it out then. Thank you, sir. Um, if you give me, if you get a chance, can you put a link here to the PR? Just hope you'll have uh, it. Sure. Thank you very Thank you. much. All right, um, next. Community time. So for those of you who were not at the face-to-face -face or may not have had a chance to read the meeting minutes, uh, we decided that we wanted to do a little bit more of an outreach to the community. So people who are not regular to this phone call, um, but who, do want, who want to provide feedback or input in terms of uh, their use cases or use of cloud events. Um, and so this is just an opportunity for people who don't know, usually join our phone calls, who are, are, who are basically what we call people you know, in the broader community, to bring up any issues, comments, concerns, whatever, um, to the group at large. Um, hopefully, we just won't uh, take up too much time. Um, that's why we only schedule 10 minutes. If it turns out we have a lot of feedback from a lot of people, which is actually a good thing, then we may end up having a dedicated phone call. But for right now, we wanted to start with just 10 minutes on the weekly call uh, to see what kind of feedback we get. Um, unfortunately, I don't see anybody new on the call. So, but let me ask the question, are, is there anybody on the call who isn't a regular, but is from the community, who would like to bring up a topic for discussion? All right, okay, uh, we'll move on then. Um, I suspect we may need to uh, broadcast this out to the broader community. I do think I sent a note out about this though. Um, yeah, that was, that was kind of putting people on the spot there. Maybe there might be something at the end. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. We could circle yeah. back around at the end. Yeah. Yep. So if anyone has anything to, to talk about as a user of cloud events, not necessarily just a, a spec writer, but someone who may have a use case or may have tried it or is working with an implementation. Yep. All right. And if I forget, please remind me to, to go back around to the end of the call. All right. Next up, I had an action item to ask about stickers and t-shirts. So I did reach out to Dan Khan and he told me that uh, next week we should be getting a, a, uh, a coupon code in order for us to order stickers. I don't know whether that's an unlimited number of stickers or not, but when I get the coupon code, I'll let you guys know. So we should be able to get some stickers fairly soon. Uh, T-shirts, unfortunately, uh, the CNCF will not pay for those because we are just a sandbox project. We have to be a little bit higher on the totem pole in order to get them to pay for T-shirts for us. However, he did point me at a particular company, which I assume he's used in the past because he recommended them. So. Um, what we should probably do is at some point discuss whether we wanted to get together um, as a group to order T-shirts because I assume the more you order, the cheaper it actually is. So I'm not going to put anybody on the spot right now in terms of whether they actually want to uh, fork up or put up money to actually buy some T-shirts. So think about it. And now next week's call, I'll do a straw poll or some kind of poll to see you know, who's interested in actually buying T-shirts to see what kind of order we can put together. Okay. There so at the face-to-face, -face, I believe Austin brought up the fact that we needed to, or we should consider changing the logo, uh, possibly update the font, et cetera. Should that uh, uh, gate stickers and or t-shirts? I would have thought so, because that makes the t-shirts a bit um, like um, unnecessary at that point. With well, the, it can be a collector's item. item. I mean, it depends how long the logo is going to take, but let's say we had it. One of the things we could do is to create a, uh, an illustrator file and put that in the GitHub repo. And then depending on how coordinated we can be with ordering, I know when we've ordered t-shirts at 
VMware for an event, they can be as little as six, six to nine dollars per per piece. Mm-hmm. It may mean that people could order their own if it's easier. Yeah. Well, so let's let's back up a sec. Um, Austin, I know you had you had actually mentioned that. Have you made any progress on that? Have you reconsidered? Do you still want to do it? What's the current status you're thinking there? Um, let's do this. I would love to take a shot at this. Time is just uh, time is just hard to find as always. I say, give me a week to submit a PR, and if I can't come up with anything, um, then let's just move forward and order some stuff. And if I get the PR in, then we should look at it as a group, and you know, I'll try and provide a few options if we like them. You know, right. we'll vote on them. If not, then uh, you know, we'll just move on with what we have. Okay, does that sound fair to everybody? All right, not hearing any objections. You have a week. There we go. Cool. Thank you, sir. All right, uh, moving forward then. Doodle polls. Austin, you want to talk about the SDK discussion, doodle poll, and resolution? Sure thing. Um, we're doing a discussion to discuss uh, the, we're doing a, a, a separate conference call to discuss the design of the Cloud Events SDK. There's a lot of interest in this. It turns out there are a lot of companies and individuals already working on this. So we put up a doodle poll to vote on when the best time would be. Right now it looks like Monday is the most optimal time. So I think we're just going to go ahead and go with that. Um, Have you closed yeah. out the poll yet? I think, I think we'll, we'll probably close it out right now and just stick with the Monday. So I guess this is more of a heads up that we're going to do the call on Monday and the time is 8 a.m. Uh, Pacific and I'll close the poll right now. But if you're interested in SDK design for cloud events, there's a GitHub issue. I think maybe Doug could put it in the, uh, in the doc here. Yeah. Um, and I'd say there's a Google doc with some proposals already. I'd say don't pay attention to Doug's times on his, on the doodle that he showed. <laughs> different time zone. Slightly different time zone this time, yes. So yeah. I'm going to close it out now. Uh, we're on for 8 a.m. on Monday, and there's a Google Doc in there with some ideas already if you want to just start contributing some stuff, and you could follow along our progress in the GitHub issue. So, Austin, what's the relationship between the Google Doc versus the issue, uh, issue 232? The Google Doc is really just a scratch pad that we'll use during the meeting and we'll kind of dump our um, conclusions into the issue. Got it. Okay. All right. Any questions, comments on that? And you'll send out the invite or something like that, right, to the mailing list so everybody knows about the meeting? Yep. I, I would like to be at that meeting. I didn't see the, um, the, do, the doodle bug or whatever it's called. Um, I may, I'm going to be traveling on Monday. I'm going to be in um, Eastern Europe. So I don't know what time that is. Would that, um, I might not be able to make it, but I would have liked to have been there. Hey, Alex, we'd love to have you. And I think this is going to be the first of many. Um, and we're going to do our best to surface all of our conclusions and discussions um, right after the meeting. So you'll be able to follow along and dive in whenever you have time. Um, and we're going to try and phase this out. You know, initial version should look like this. The next version should look like this. So we're not going to like do anything just yet. We're just going to decide the scope of it. And you said 4 p.m. PDT. 8 a.m. Um, Pacific on Monday. Which is... Um, that's six. I may be able to join. But yeah, if you can... Can you put some stuff in the chat for where we can find the details? Yeah, I think I posted it in the cloud events and serverless Slack. You might just have to scroll up. It's in the yeah, there are a lot of messages in Slack. Um, is that the yeah. only way we announce things like this through a Slack message? Or It's tough. I, we've got a lot of places to look um, in this effort. I also have a hard time following along. <laughs> yeah, I completely miss this. Um, okay. so yeah, I, think, I think an email might be the best way to reach everybody at this point. Yeah. Okay, go awesome. ahead, Kathy. Yeah, I'm also interested in join. Sorry, I didn't pay attention to this um, poll. Um, so if I cannot join, I will um, dedicate someone um, to join this meeting. But you are going to bring back the um, discussion, right? To this uh, work group, right? The SDK oh. design proposal back, right? Always. And if we do it on Monday, we should be able to be able to present what we discuss on the following Thursday on okay. this call. Okay. Okay. Thank you. 
Yeah, and just to be clear, the, the, the first meeting was only to discuss what is the scope of things that we could talk about and what do we think we should limit it to. And then after, after we've figured that out, we'll start doing the work to uh, provide code or whatever else based, based on that feedback. So I don't think that people will be missing a whole lot on the first one as we just tried to scope it. So the um, any um, follow-on meetings will be the same time or, or could, could it be different time? Um, this is only going to be a one-off meeting right now. We'll take our findings, report it to the group on the Thursday call, and then figure out how to move forward from there. Oh, I see. Okay. Okay, thank you. All right. Any other comments on this one? All right. Up next, Kathy, you had a doodle poll for the workflow call. Yeah. Um, is so, that one still open or closed? So this is in Pacific daytime, the time. So I just want to clarify. Um, uh, about, uh, yeah, sorry. Okay. Um, yeah, so this is in Pacific daytime. Uh, and okay. Yeah, I can show New York time. Um, so I see some. Uh, yeah, I, I saw the people. There are two time slots very close. One is, uh, you know, uh, eight people, the other is seven people. Austin, I saw that, you know, you could not attend any of the time slots. Yeah, this time around, those are, those are hard times for me to do. I really want to participate in this, but I couldn't make those. But I will follow closely and try and jump in the subsequent calls. Oh, okay. oh, okay. So this is just an example of the date. It's it's a biweekly uh, meeting. So Austin, I, you said you cannot attend this time, or you cannot attend like every Tuesday and Wednesday. You cannot attend every any Tuesday or Wednesday. Oh yeah, I didn't know that this was going to be ongoing. Um, yeah, it's ongoing. So since it is, I'm going to have to look at this again, and I'll I'll chime in with uh, what works best for me. Okay, good. Yeah, this is an ongoing. It just, you know, it's just an example of, you know, the time um, slot. Yeah. So, so, what, so are we gonna are we gonna pick Tuesday, or did you want to wait on Tuesday at uh, one thirty Eastern, or did you want to wait for Austin to vote, or how, how do you want to work this, Kathy? It's up to you. I would like to wait for Austin to vote, or any other um, people who you know who who like to vote. Um, okay. Please. So what, what's, the, what's the new deadline then for this vote? Because I do think we need to have a firm deadline so everybody knows yeah. when they need to get there. How about, um, how about end of tomorrow? Oops. Um, Pacific daytime, end of tomorrow. Sounds of, good. Yeah. Uh, end of day Friday. Got it. Okay. All right. Any questions, comments on that? All right. Cool. Moving forward then. At the face-to-face, -face, um, I can't remember who it was, but someone brought up the fact that uh, we forgot to actually do sort of a post-mortem about the interop event. So uh, added an agenda item for us to discuss that. Are there any comments, observations, or anything along those lines that people want to bring up relative to the interop event, aside from Austin did an awesome job putting everything together? Nothing? Um, this is Rachel. I think it would have been uh, like, I didn't think this at the time. I didn't understand the importance of this, but in retrospect, I think it would have been fun to have more image providers, like more sources emitting the events. So maybe for the next demo that we do, we could do that. Okay. Or maybe chaining them together might be the thing to do. Just like show more of the um, process. I didn't understand what an interrupt event was but now I, I think this was a demo from KubeCon. Yes. Maybe we could talk about this in in plainer language like the I don't know the KubeCon um, event gateway demo. So I I felt um, like we missed out on that. Uh, OpenVAS community really would have liked to have been a part of it. Um, somehow we didn't get the message and we you know we're used to working very late notice um, with a few hours, we can turn things around. So for the next demo, it would be great if we could find a way of being inclusive with it. 
Well, it, it, there has been uh, you know, three weeks of uh, work that we all did together and mm -hmm. uh, the door was open the whole time, so I don't know. Well, we, had people, we had people in the calls as well, but um, one comment was that it was only decided at the last minute or um, with a few days. So. I, I did, I did I, three week, weeks of work on it and, mm -hmm. and all in public with public repos. Maybe the takeaway is to message it to people that might not know about it next time. Yeah. Well, we, we can't do more than just have it on the call every week and say, hey, we're doing this work and come. And I mean, there were a ton of people joining. It was all happening on the, on the Slack. So it's hard to see how much more we can do there, right? Okay, it's not a criticism to you, Clemens. It's just, uh, it's just something that we noticed, just like the, um, the call for um, designing the SDK. Like that was on a Slack message. So it's just um, so, so maybe. What, what, what do we maybe do this? What if, what, what if we just try to make sure that going forward, uh, announcements about meetings or anything, you know, anything big like this is put out on the mailing list? I know some people like Slack, but I feel like not everybody actually watches Slack very closely. But mailing lists should show up in everybody's inbox. What if we just assume that's the preferred mechanism for getting the notice out about something? Is that okay with people? Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah, I like that because I don't have the gigabytes on my machine to run Slack. <laughs> <laughs> Different topic. Uh, I'll, I'll also add that, that we found out Twitter wasn't the, the, the best uh, presentation vehicle, given that they, we were locked out. Yeah, we've, we've had that with the Colorize bot a number of times. They don't like you automating it. Yeah. Okay, anything else? I think it might be worthwhile actually developing a, a similar demo uh, running uh, RSS or something like that as an alternative. So we can actually validate it well beforehand. Who was that speaking? Oh, RSS. This is Louis. I was proposing that we uh, evaluate RSS as a way of demonstrating the, uh, showing the demo uh, and try it out well beforehand. Yeah, that's something that we actually brought up during the face-to-face, uh, -face, and I, I like the idea of, of using a, an RSS feed for this. Yeah. yeah. I, I think we discussed it, Ciaron, uh, you know, with images, it will probably be problematic with RSS. So if we can, we talked about maybe doing a single page thing that uh, reads from a queue or something. But um, it supports embeddings, and so that works with RSS. <clears throat> but is, is it visible? or you get sort of a link and someone no. needs to open and download and Well, you can't embed them, but we didn't embed them in Twitter either. So you basically put an HTML there with, a, with an image tag and it will show in every RSS aggregator. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm trying to find a, uh, an intern who might have some free time to put together basically a, uh, a Facebook, I'm sorry, not Facebook, a Twitter light kind of thing, basically to, to visualize the stream at some point so that we don't have to rely on Twitter, but it gives the same sort of net effect. But we'll, we'll see how that goes, just so you guys know. So two, two changes that I had to do for dispatch. One was uh, ensuring that we could set up a Let's Encrypt uh, in order to have uh, real certificates. Um, and then the other was the application Cloud Events plus JSON change. What was the first one again, Mark? I'm sorry. Oh, but I needed to, to have a real certificate, not a self-signed certificate. Yeah. Ah. I'm not saying that that's a problem per se, but it was, it were, it was things that uh, had to scramble to, to get in place. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I definitely had to, to learn how to use uh, Let's Encrypt for Kubernetes. Yeah, it's not, it's not easy, is it, with Cert Manager? Um, it's easy when you know how. <laughs> so that I think that just speaks to like the preparation for the next for the next run. Um, we're talking about RSS, which sounds um, you know I remember that back in the day as well. What about something like our our group Slack? Um, if we just get a token from the administrator, we could use that. And we're all on there. The, the nice thing about RSS is that you can, everybody can go and publish to a feed that they have, and then you can go and pull it all together in an aggregator, which means you can really make it, make it distributed. And then you have an aggregator, which basically shows it all in one place. Like Google Reader? 
<laughs> if that would still exist. Yes. No blow, man. Uh, be, be nice. Be nice. <laughs> <laughs> but there's there are still plenty of those RSS readers around. You can use Innovator or, or any of those things. RSS didn't die with Google Reader. So I feel like some of this discussion is kind of bearing into what we want to do for the next interrupt demo. Yeah. And let's try to focus just on sort of feedback on the on the previous one if we can. Yeah. Um, one of the things that I would have really appreciated is like a clear deadline on uh, being an event source. Um, I would have rearranged my work um, so that I could actually be included in the demo. That'd be good too. Yep. Good point. Anything else? Yeah, I've got some 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 feedback, and I'm sorry for the background noise. I've got uh, some presentations coming up, so I'm at a coffee shop. Um, you know, I think I think the goals that some of us had in mind, and I especially had in mind for this one, was want to get some visibility for this effort. Want to do something that really turns heads and want to do something that demonstrates possibility. Um, and I think that this demo in particular really accomplished that. And you know, the, the room was super full. I think the view count on the video is actually one of the highest from KubeCon overall. Um, I regularly get, regularly get a lot of comments and uh, you know, favorable feedback on just the presentation. And I think it, it has people talking about it. When I have like private conversations with people, you know, end users and just people in this space, like they're, I hear that they know about this, so the awareness is there, which is good, and they're talking about it in a way that it seems like they're trying to factor cloud events into their future plan projects. And a lot of these people aren't surfaced in this group right now. There's only you know, a select people who participate in, this, in the actual working group here. Um, but I hear this out, out in the ecosystem now, and that's, and that's super exciting. And then the other criteria kind of for this demo was like, how do we come up with something that's inclusive of all the vendors in the group? And that's a really, really hard thing um, to try and rig up something like that. And we actually, I think we nailed it. Um, so that was, that was pretty neat. Uh, overall, I think, you know, for a first demo, for just coming out of the gate, wanting to get that visibility, wanting to demonstrate what's possible, being inclusive of everybody that's involved, um, as long as, you know, they got the memo, then, uh, <laughs> you know, we, I think we nailed that. You know, up, up next, we got to make it real for people. We got to get closer to those real world use cases. Um, we've got to get the tools, the other pieces that, you know, are just kind of sta table stakes for using this stuff more easily, like the SDKs. Um, integrations into you know all pieces of important popular pieces of infrastructure in the ecosystem um, so we got to get more real now in what we do next so that's my I think that's my biggest feedback and um, but overall I'd say you know given those criteria which are hard it's really hard to get visibility get people excited be inclusive of all types of vendors I think we we knocked it out of the park there I would agree yeah, based on what I can see, effectively from my vantage point, then looking out into the, our customer ecosystem, um, it really put cloud events on the map. Like people were surprised that there were so many uh, vendors involved, and uh, were also surprised that all of a sudden, you know, out of nothing, um, uh, so many vendors come together and show something that interrupts. And that was something that um, certainly customers um, that I've seen react. Uh, either directly or via social media were um, very excited by. All right. Yes, I've, I've heard the same thing. Um, it's one thing to put out this, put out a standard. It's another thing to do it with all of the industry influencers coming together. And at the end of the day, that's probably gonna be the thing that makes the most difference. And we, we've done such a great job with that so far. So exciting stuff. All right, any other feedback from the event? Oh, okay. so the, the, the reason that we're doing the, this feedback is that it's a, uh, actually on the roadmap for 0 0.2, so we can now cross that off. Ah, good point, okay. Okay, cool. All right, moving forward then, issue maintenance. Um, what I'm, what I'm trying to do going forward is as new issues are opened up <clears throat> when appropriate, I'm going to try to see if we can find an owner for them just so we have someone who can sort of shepherd it through the process. I think we have actually had more than one open, but I think only one of them 
um, it actually makes sense to have an owner at this particular time. So Thomas, since you opened up this one about needing, or do we really need both binary and structured encoding? Would you be willing to take the ownership of that one? Uh, as long as I understand like what the, what the procedure is for the owner. Like, do I just tag in people who I know care about it? Uh, do I just make sure I respond to comments in a timely manner? It's, it's more just to help make sure that something happens with the issue. It gets re resolved in some fashion. So whether that's, I mean, that, that doesn't mean you yourself have to write the PR, but as you said, get the right people involved who want to have the discussion around it and see if you can come up with some kind of PR for it, if, if that's what you want. Sure, yeah. I mean, I think it's a bit ambiguous for discussion PRs or discussion issues, but I can take on her. Okay, appreciate that. Thank you. All right. Now, I believe during the face-to-face -face meeting, we briefly talked about these two issues, and we agreed that we could probably close them, but we wanted to give people time to look it over. So I did put a note in each issue saying, if you care about this one and want to champion it, uh, please speak up, um, and that, they, uh, people, that we were probably going to end up closing the issue fairly soon if no one speaks up. So this is my way of saying, um, if no one speaks up by next week, I'd like to close these two issues, um, if everybody's okay with that. So this is just a heads up for people. Is there any concern with um, giving one more week and then closing these two if there's no comments or somebody willing to, to uh, champion it? All right, cool, thank you guys. Next, um, this is just for me. Uh, Jason, I, I, I think his last name is Roper, I believe. He's in Australia, so he probably isn't on the call. But he opened up, a, uh, I can't remember if it's an issue or PR, let me say, it's a pull request for to add an event key field to the spec. Now, during the face-to-face, -face, we briefly talked about this, and the notes <laughs> have an AI for Cummins and myself to add this non-goal of defining transport. I have no idea what that means. Oh, wait, um, who wrote this right here? Is that I did. Clemens? You got it. Okay, cool. So you know what it was. Okay, never mind then. So you know what we need to do there? Yeah, it's uh, that effectively the, the transport binding itself needs to go and figure out how to go and, and create these um, uh, these elements from uh, what the metadata yields because it's really a concern of Kafka for how to go and do the, uh, the partition key. Um, and we have the same scenario. We have a scenario that actually layers on an existing spec where we have now an AMQP binding and uh, we need partition keys for um, event hubs. Um, or you know, at least as an option to do that for event hubs, which uses NQP. And uh, we, I would have to go and we would have to go and define effectively a constraint over the NQP spec that says, well, here's how you generate your partition key. Got it. Okay, cool. Thank you for the clarification. I appreciate it. So it seems like every time someone new comes in, um, everyone assumes, well, of course, this is, since this goes over a message queue, it must be, you know, it must include your topic, it must include your shard key, whatever. I wonder if there's a good place to put in like, our spec, what non-goals are like things that we have learned should not be here. Yes, and I think the doc wanted to write this primer uh, intro, and I think that should also have these these you know uh, things we have just considered and have uh, said we shouldn't be doing them kind of principles. Yep. In fact, that I already opened up the PR for that, and I think that it would be a great place to put this type of information because it's not necessarily normative text, but it is sort of uh, background history guidance, whatever you want to call it, and that's usually what a primer is for. So yep, I agree with you, Thomas. All right, moving forward. Actually, uh, relative to what you just said there, Thomas, um, I don't want to lose track of your suggestion, though. Would you want to open up an issue just so we don't lose track of that? Sure. OK, cool. Thank you very much. All right, um, the next one. Uh, CJ, I think you're on the call. Am I pronouncing your name right? I thought I saw CJ, hold on. Do, 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 do. So, so on this one, I have a principal uh, yeah. I, On this one, I have a principal question. Well, hold, hold on, Clemens. I, CJ, are you there? Yeah, uh, what's mean? Yeah. Yeah, would you like to just quickly just introduce this PR and then Clemens, you can go ahead and make your comment. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So uh, this PI is basically tied uh, to uh, introduce uh, Apache Corsa as a uh, transport bounding uh, for the cloud event. Uh, basically, uh, we are trying to play uh, around with the cloud event uh, stack, and uh, that's why uh, we want to see how uh, Apache Corsa can uh, uh, integrate with uh, uh, how can that be uh, one of the transport bounding for cloud events, and how we can map the 
uh, post some messages between uh, the cloud event spec. In that way, uh, the cloud event can be used as some uh, event uh, presentation for the post our functions to process the uh, uh, events in the stream. All right. So that is the, the purpose of the PR. Okay, thank you very much. And Clemens, you want to make a comment? Yeah, so my, my, there's a principal question here. And that is, so first of all, I looked at, I just looked at the binary um, transport stack of Pulsar, which is effectively a four byte framing preamble for a protobuf um, um, frames. So I'm wondering whether there is even a Pulsar protocol. Um, and, and one is not like the others in that we have so far mostly all mapped to actual standards. So we're kind of building a layer on top of things that are in standard consortiums. And arguably what the Pulsar team here does is effectively creating a proprietary protocol just for that project. And I feel it's, it rubs me kind of a bit in the wrong way to bless proprietary um, protocols of single projects with um, official bindings of a standards effort. That is an excellent point. I, I, I didn't realize this was a proprietary binding. Yeah. The, so, so when you when you look at the binary when you look at the binary protocol, it's it's a it's a preamble framing um, that basically just says here comes a protobuf message, and then the 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 protocol basically just puts protobuf on on the wire. So it's it's effectively TCP preamble protobuf, and that doesn't meet the bar for me for something that is um, a protocol in a bigger sense, frankly. Um, and so I, I find it, and it will probably need, probably evolve and need work. Um, and it's an incubation project in the Apache in the Apache Foundation, and that doesn't. Um, I, I feel I feel it's wrong to go and elevate um, singular efforts um, so, with blessing so, from standards org. So Clemens, I wanna make sure I understand, is this proprietary in the sense that it's not been through a standards body or it's proprietary that it's only by one company? Yeah, no, it's, I think it's one, if it's one project, so I, can, I could go, so if we, I could go and make a, make a project in the Apache Foundation or in Linux Foundation or somewhere else, right. um, just by their rules, make up any proprietary protocol that I want um, and then come to cloud events and propose a binding, which is then kind of, you know, a standards body as, as we're operating, and then kind of gets blessed by that as, you know, an official thing kind of by, by indirectly by us, by us giving it official blessing. I think it's perfectly good for that project to have a cloud events binding. It's just strange to me that um, it, if, if we would make that binding uh, uh, canonical. I wonder if we can do this um, sort of compromise where we have like almost a second class listing of, you know, proprietary technologies and how they're used. Because I think a lot of like there are proprietary platforms and as a platform vendor, it makes sense mm -hmm. that you want to encourage interoperability. So like, for example, I'm, I'm sure I will come back someday and say Google Cloud Pub Sub uses this mapping. Yes. Uh, but I totally understand that it may not be at least one click away from spec.md, maybe it's two clicks away. Yeah, and I agree. So uh, uh, having this, having this, having a catalog of, and here are event, here are implementations for particular products um, that are using cloud event, and here's how you map those, and, and pointer to their project documentation. I think that's, that's great. But just having that as, you know, having these sorts of specs sitting side by side with mappings for um, ratified standards like HTTP and MQP and MQT, which are you know foundations for you know broader product categories, that just doesn't seem right to me. So I want to make sure you guys are on the same page though, because I'm not 100% sure you are. I think you're on the same page in that there's a, a second tier of protocol, protocol mappings, but do those second tier documents sit within our repository, or do they sit in the other person's repository with just a pointer from ours? What's the suggestion there? Yeah. My suggestion is that we point to them, so we make a catalog, but we don't embed them in our repository. Is that consistent with your saying, Thomas? Uh, it was not my original intention. I'd have to think about whether I'm for or against that. I was thinking that we would just have it in um, 
like a secondary folder in our repository. All right, that's what I thought you meant too. That's why I thought there was a difference there, yeah. So is there anybody else on the call has an opinion on this? Just to clarify on the second tier, second level thing, I mean, Kafka would be in the same boat, is that right? Yeah, I think so, because it's a, it's a, it's a proprietary protocol just of the Kafka project. Exactly, perfect. I think that helps Quite, also too. Why does a NAT's, a NATS streaming stand with this that has a spec and um, MQTT? I guess MQTT has a consortium behind it. Well, MQ, yeah, MQTT is an OASIS standard. And, and it's actually it's actually an ISO standard. Um, I don't know where where where, where NAT sits uh, relative to that. If that's if there's still just that one implementation, it would also be in, in that in that. So we already have a NATS. Um, what are we calling these? Not specs, bindings, and it's. I think it's being merged. I believe so. Yes. <laughs> it is. I th I th Nats has a fully spec'd out. Um, I, I don't. I don't. I have maybe. I have not understood the relationship between Nats, the protocol, which I read as a you know, universally implementable protocol. And if there's only one implementation of the Nats protocol, then it would, then it would certainly go in, in to, uh, and and meet that second tier definition. And, and I'm 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 making this a point because I'm all for promoting broad interoperability. And broad interoperability does not mean that you, when you start a project, you just start making your own protocols. So what if we did this? Um, what if we do this in two step process? First, people review the current PR to see if the text of the protocol definition here sounds good as a first draft. Um, and then two, maybe Clemens, maybe you could write up a PR with how to structure this second tier type of system that we're going to set up. Mm -hmm. And then we could see um, if people like that second tier system or not. And, and we'll hold off actually accepting this PR until we decide whether we want a second tier and we'd like your proposal. Okay. okay. Yep. Uh, I would suggest that we have a standard for what is a standard. <laughs> I agree. Yes. And I, th I think that's uh, um, there, there needs to be there needs to be a principle obviously that guides that, and since I brought up that point, I own uh, um, probably articulating that principle. Yes. Uh, like I would not bring I would not bring a MSMQ binding um, um, to this group. Um, even though I would know how to how to do it on MSMQ because MSMQ is a proprietary protocol, and so I would just not do that. So Kafka seems like something that our end users are very likely to want to use, especially in bigger business. And are we saying that we just don't want to support them in this effort, or that they everyone should implement their own Kafka binding? So we have a so in in the Kafka case there is. Um, I would say uh, an out that is relatively new because there is now a second clean Kafka protocol implementation that we built. Um, and that kind of makes it a de facto multi-party standard. And we're gonna engage in the Kafka community specifically on the protocol pieces. Yeah, but I'm trying to understand why are we trying to be so strict? You know, you go to uh, Spark, you have a bunch of uh, plugins for any database in the world. Uh, why should we make it so complicated? You know, we should have a repo for everyone that feels like uh, there, you know, there is a standards and specifications, but the implementations should we should open to that. Yeah, I'm, 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 since we're defining effectively a standard here, um, I'm just trying to be um, in that standard. The goal of that standard is to promote interoperability. It seems odd to me that we would um, be happy for proliferation of project proprietary protocol at the bottom and then simply go and layer stuff on top of uh, at the bottom of it. I think it, I, and right. I, but, you know, but when you have CNI driver or CSI driver, also part of, uh, you know, CNCF standardization efforts, you have CNI drivers for, you know, uh, Cisco and VMware and, you know, open vSwitch and whatever. And we're not uh, so restrictive as what we're trying to do here. Yeah, but you know, these are new, if there's a new effort and the new effort it starts to um, uh, to send messages across the wire, why are they not picking MQTT? Because then they could actually go and leverage the binding that we already have. But because maybe someone has his own 
implementation which is uh, faster or whatever, you know, or is that, implementing that, new features. And, and but, that's the know. thing, right? Like you, you look at you look at four standards that exist, and instead of picking one of the four, because it doesn't quite exactly know what you do, you create a fifth. And that's how you get 20 and 25, and that's how we destroy interoperability. And I think if we're, if we're here to go and promote interoperability, we should also do our, our part in, in stopping proliferation of proprietary protocols and not, not try to sanction that. Right, but you may have open source projects which become sort of de facto standards, you know, not ITF yes. or IEEE or whatever. And now we're going to block, the, block them from being able to participate or we're making it much more complicated for users to use those things. Yeah, see, at Kafka, it's something that is established as a top tier project. And I think that sits in a completely different category than an incubator project, which is, for, which is new. Right, but who are you to decide which one, you know, maybe tomorrow there'll be another project, which is in its inception, is still not widely adopted, but people want to use it. So, you know, if you're making an exception for Kafka, which is not an ITF or IEEE or whatever standard, then I think we should uh, open up for, uh, we, want, we shouldn't be so strict. So, so Clemens, is it true yes. that I think in your mind you actually have a distinction between um, a protocol binding for a completely new type of binding yes. versus a protocol binding for something like, say, HTTP, right? If someone was to come along with a brand new HTTP binding that yes. is just different than the one we have, I think you're really concerned about a proliferation of HTTP bindings, right? You want only one HTTP binding, right? Uh, no, that's, that's, not, that's, not, that's not even the point. Um, my point is, I don't, I, I don't want to sanction uh, people making endless numbers of new protocols where there is a selection of existing interoperable protocols for their, um, for their, uh, for that purpose. And then us happily accepting the fact that everybody's making their own protocol and then kind of go and just provide bindings for all those protocols because that doesn't help with interoperability. That's not part of the, that doesn't align with the, with uh, the goals that, that we, that I have in, in, you know, making, making sure that we have more interoper interoperability because actually it leads to less interoperability where everybody can now go, go and put the same payload on a less interoperable ecosystem. And that doesn't make sense to me. So, so instead of doing that, I would go and say, if there is, and, and I think the base principle is if you have a protocol, that protocol must be implemented in, um, at least two projects, it needs to have a proper protocol spec, and it needs to be um, implemented in at least, at least two um, projects independent of vendors. So that's similar to the rules that you're familiar with in Oasis, um, even though they say three. And, um, and basically promote interoperability and not for every project to just come along, make their own thing, and then make a cloud events uh, uh, binding and then declare that as, um, and claim, can be able to claim that that's a standard thing, because it's not. Right, so let, let's do this, because I don't want to take up the rest of the time with this, because I think this is a little bit contentious. Um, so Clemens, you took the AI to write up a PR to describe the process we're gonna use to decide, uh, mm -hmm. one, whether we wanna have a second tier, pro, uh, tier set of specs or not, and how we're gonna decide what falls into that category, whether yes. it's two implementations, or whatever you wanna call it. So, and that will, once you, once you have the PR, people can review that, look at it, comment, and go back and forth within the PR itself to see how people feel. And that'll give people some time to think about it a little more rather than on the spot right now. Yep. Okay. And, we'll, and we'll, obviously we'll come back and revisit that. But yes. in the meantime, I would like people to go and look at this particular PR to see if they're okay with the actual text in there as a starting point for a, a draft. And then we can just figure out based on Clement's PR, whether we're going to accept it and how we're going to accept it. Does that sound fair? And we'll, we, won't, we won't vote on that today, obviously, away from Kremlin's PR to get results. Um, also, a piece of warning, I'm, I'm on vacation next week. All so, right. But I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to try to get that text in. Okay. Appreciate that. Okay. Any other questions, comments on that topic? All right, so at the face-to-face, -face, we talked about <clears throat> removing the extensions attribute itself. And let me show the text based upon what we agreed to. So basically what we agreed at the face-to-face -face was to have basically this type of paragraph here, which basically says, 
producers can include additional attributes. Um, that's about it. Um, now I did add another tech plan of text here that says uh, new extensions <clears throat> should be when you're defining new extension, you should take care to make sure you pick a name that's descriptive enough so that you can try to avoid conflicts with other extensions or future things we're going to define. Uh, that's probably the best we could do because obviously we can't absolutely guarantee that going forward. But this is the gist of what I think we agreed to with the face to face. Um, are there any questions or comments on that? Do people need more time to think about this before we even think about voting? How do you guys feel? It is consistent with what people think we agreed to at the face-to-face? -face? I think, Thomas, you, you, you're okay with that with some minor nits, but I think I addressed. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, given that the things I was asking for are gonna be something Clement takes on, I'm fine. Yes, he has some AIs for those. So, so Doc, does it mean we're going to remove the extension uh, attribute from the spec, right? Correct, yes. Yes. So in the future, if um, if a new uh, attribute need to be added, it just add it as a top level uh, attribute. Like well, so it depends, what, it, it depends on what you're talking about. If you're talking about a new attribute from the spec perspective, it's gonna be just like all the others. If you're talking about an extension attribute, that's gonna be done, or that's gonna be handled at the transport spec level. And Clemens has, a P, has an AI Yes. to modify all of our transport specs to say how extensions will appear in each of those transports. So does it mean that uh, any new field um, related to the event will be put as a top level um, attribute similar to this event type, but any new um, uh, attributes associated with uh, transport will be put it into the transport spec? Mm, no. no. So the the I th what we agree to is that we don't we're not going to make we're not going to make in um, a distinction here in, for in the main spec for extensions. We're basically just allowing that extensions can go and extend the the attribute set inside of the cloud event um, um, envelope, and then it's really up to the extension spec per se to define how that project, how its attributes project into the respective transport. So the, the extensions become a layer on top of the existing specification set. And, and, then, and then there will be a generic, so, so in, in each transport spec will have a generic way to, um, to map extensions if the extension itself doesn't have an opinion. So if the extension itself says, the attribute X must be mapped to a particular HTTP header because like in, in the case of, I think open tracing it was, there is a set of very specific HTTP headers that, are, that must be used. Then the extension spec is effectively overriding anything else and says, if you have this, if you have to find this, this attribute, then that's, that must produce the following HTTP headers in, uh, in the HTTP mapping. And then there was gonna, for, for all other cases where the extension is not specific about this, there's gonna be a default mapping that the, um, that the uh, transport specs will define. Does that answer your question, Kathy? Uh, okay, so so um, sorry because I missed that I missed that discussion in the face to face. So in there were so there is an extension on spec, a separate extension spec. Yes. Like so so think of think of there being a catalog of extensions. So there will be an an open events. Uh, uh, what's that? Open tracing spec. That is an extension spec. That extension spec will define an additional or two or three additional attributes. I think Thomas brought those. Uh, I think there were three, um, three additional attributes that can then be included in the cloud event spec. And then it will also define how for specifically for HTTP because there are specific rules for, for, open, for open tracing for HTTP, how that actually works in HTTP. And if you want to use the same metadata and have that flow in MQP and in MQTT, um, but you're not specific about in your extension spec, then there's going to be a default way of how those fields are going to be mapped and, and, and still transported. Okay, so those fields will be defined per, um, per transport. Per right? extension, per extension. So you write a spec in the extension and the extension defines what the fields are and it then also defines special handling for special transports. So it's all self-contained in the extension and your extension spec needs to, as you write a new one, 
needs to take care that you don't have clashes um, uh, with um, uh, the, the base specification um, or, and then also avoid clashes with um, other extensions. Um, and that's mostly by convention. And with that, we actually av avoid having you know, prefixes or anything that's special. So if you're writing something that's for open tracing, you would probably go um, to be safe to go and, and, and name your attributes open tracing something so that um, you avoid clashes. But I don't think we need to have hard and fast rules here um, to go and you know, do prefixes for everything that are kind of weird, but we just make it in, in an organic fashion and just put it on the, put the, the responsibility on the extension spec owner to go and do the right thing. But, but just to be clear, the extension, the extension spec owner only needs to write those special rules for how it gets serialized on the That's wire. Right. That's if right. it doesn't want, if they don't want to follow the generic pattern that we're going to put into each transport spec. That is correct. Right. Yes. Okay. So those extensions are just specifically to that transport over the no. wire. No, they're not. You write an extension and the extension is to the cloud events envelope. And then you, um, and which effectively adds to the abstract, um, the abstract model, the abstract data model that we have. And then as you serialize that, um, as you serialize and map that um, cloud events um, uh, document down to the transport, then you also apply rules. So the way I think about this in software is that you um, effectively are, are you have two pieces. You have the cloud events document. Let's say that's a, a, an object graph. Um, that object graph, the, the spec tells you, hey, you can add the following three properties into that object graph. Then you run that through a pipeline. And the pipeline, there's a pipeline stage here in the HTTP transport that says, oh, I know those three things. And it will then go in the HTTP pipeline and then take these three properties in, and map them appropriately to HTTP. So think of it really as a plugin model. And the extension spec is defining how you ought to write your plugin. Does that help, Kathy? Yeah, it helps. Uh, I think probably I still need some time to read through this extension spec and the how all this definition, you know, um, the restriction, the, the I'll, I'll write. I'll write this, I summarize this for Doug's document. Um, and then also make the additions. And I'm gonna, and I'm gonna make that, I'm gonna, that's the, the one work item I'm gonna go into along with the, the principles for um, protocols um, next week and then have that in time for uh, the Tuesday deadline. Right, okay. okay. Uh, so, yeah, so given Kathy's questions on this, let's, let's hold off on voting on this one, give people another week or so to, to look, over, look it over, as well as um, see how it relates to the AIs that uh, Clemens has. Is that okay with everybody? Okay, we only have four minutes left. Um, so there's one thing I wanted to bring up before we do we circle back around things. Uh, where is it? So I did, oh, as I mentioned, I opened up a PR for the first pass at a primer. It is by no means a complete primer. It's just sort of a, a reorganization of existing documentation that we have, just pulling it all together into a single document. And I did add, a, at least, I think, at least one placeholder for additional text to come later. This is just the first draft of the document, just to get something out there so that people can start issuing other PRs to it. Not going to ask for a vote right now, obviously, but please just take a look at it. I'd like to see if we can get uh, comments on that and potentially address the comments before um, next week's call. So maybe we can get that document or that PR merged. So please just take a look when you get a chance. Um, and before we go back and double check on roll call, uh, per Alex's suggestion, let's circle back to community time. Is there anybody on the call from the community who has a topic they would like to bring up for discussion? Going once. Okay, not hearing any. Um, I, I'm pretty Thanks sure I sent. That. Yep, sure. Um, I'm pretty sure I did send a note, but I'll double check to make sure I sent a note out on the mailing list about this. Um, and let me just circle back around now for the uh, attendees. Um, Anthony Skipper, are you online? Anthony, I am. You are? I'm here. And what company are you with? Is this your first time? Uh, Galactic Fog. No, we're here fairly regularly. We, uh, we, uh, oh. what do you call it? Uh, we're just in the background. Okay. I wasn't sure if you were here or not. Okay. Uh, Matt, are you there? I'm here, Doug. Excellent. Clemens, I got you. Louie, I heard. Kathy, I heard. Is there anybody who is not on the agenda 
by list of attendees with a star. I think I might have everybody. All right, in that case, we have a whole two minutes. Is there any other topics people would like to bring up that we can quickly hash through in two minutes? I just wanted to ask one question about cloud events. Mm -hmm. So are the cloud events something that we're expecting cloud providers like AWS and Azure to uh, support? Or is it something where we kind of take events from the cloud providers and then convert it into a more standard format just to help me understand how this is going to be working in practice? So Clemens, you want to answer for Microsoft since you guys actually yes. have something you can say about that? Uh, absolutely. Mike, if you um, read the documentation of Azure Event Grid, which is the platform capability that emits events from the cloud platform, you will find that we natively support Cloud Events 0.1 today, and uh, we will uh, support all further iterations in productions, and when Cloud Events goes 1.0 as an appropriate standard, then I foresee that we will switch to that format as the primary one. I think the way I'd answer it is yes, that cloud providers can uh, switch over to using cloud events as a native format. And also there will be uh, connections from legacy event sources into cloud events that are, will be occurring. Uh, things like dispatch or the, the serverless event gateway uh, do those types of translations. Are we seeing any um, thing in the industry other than from Azure? I um, someone from Azure I met at DockerCon told me that the previous spec for event grids was very similar to the spec for cloud events, uh, being a JSON body with some of the same elements. What about where we have a much more varied spec like the AWS um, spec for events? Are we seeing any any interest there? I think Tim Ray is going to join us from AWS and we'll then eventually be able to talk about that. Yeah. Yep. And unfortunately with that, I think we're going to have to call it time. I did notice one person on the call. Ying, are you on the call? Ying? Okay. I think with that, we're going to have to call it time. Thank you guys very much. We'll, we'll talk to you again you. next week. Bye. Thank you. Thanks, Bye. Thank you. Thank you.